Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you here this morning to the 12th of November. We're in double digits of November. Next thing you know, it'll be, you know, what, two weeks will be Thanksgiving. Wow. As we're rolling along. And uh, let's take a quick look at our bulletin. As uh, we see what's happening today, we have uh, the in-gathering. We'll here this morning. This stuff will be uh, distributed to those in need throughout the week. And also, this is the same day that uh, Operation Christmas Child, that uh, these boxes are due to be taken to their distribution point and shared throughout the world. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. so, let's take a few moments and let's pray for these blessings that we have, both, both for the, the food and also for the, for the Christmas child. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the generosity and the hearts of the individuals here in Montana. Lord, we would just ask that the food that has been donated, may it nourish not only one's physical frame, but Lord, may they realize that it's given in love and the love that you have bestowed upon each and every one to give it to them. And Lord, may they realize that you are God, and we respond to them with the same attributes as you. Lord, may they realize that there are folks out there that are willing to help. And Lord, we just thank you for the organizations that, that provide those life-giving articles, whether it be food or clothing. And Lord, Thank you for allowing us to be a part of nourishing someone's soul. And Lord, for the children, who in a few short weeks will be opening up all these boxes, the millions of boxes that are collected. And Lord, we know that inside is a message that gives them hope, a hope that is only found in Jesus Christ. Yes, we know that there is gifts in there, something to bring about a, a moment of pleasure in maybe in a war-torn country or alleviate a little bit of anxiety in their family's life. Lord, may each box and each child receive a blessing from you. And Lord, we pray these things for both the boxes, for those that receive it, and for the givers who give it. Lord, we ask these things in your name and above all names, Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Amen. Amen. By way of announcements, Wednesday there's a tea party out at uh, Anna Walder's house, and that's at 6 o'clock, and that's with the Dorcas meeting. Uh, if you need a ride, uh, see Jamie, and she'll be able to, uh, or, or uh, someone. Or those that are driving him, raise their hand and ask if they can ride with or something. Either call Jamie or, or, uh, I, or I know uh, Dawn is helping with that too. So uh, she's coming out. You're picking up beef, right? Yes. All right. So if you're over that way and you need some an extra spot, yeah, give them a call. Also, Thursday, right here in the morning at 9 30, is a pickup for the RK subs. Of course, with the things that are happening up and coming, looking ahead, uh, Country Comfort uh, on the 20th at 6.30. Uh, then on the, the, the uh, Sunday, the 3rd of December, there is a, uh, right after worship service, we'll be having a, a meal, a holiday meal, followed by a uh, congregation meeting. So just out on the bulletin board, there is a, a sign-up sheet as to what you may be bringing. Not holding you to it, but you know, if you put your name down, it gives those who are coordinating an opportunity to see what may come in. Also, then on the fourth, following that big meal on the third, we're going to be right here again uh, doing some uh, uh, painting, painting on canvas. The costs and everything are there. Uh, if you have any questions, see Dawn; she'll be able to plug you into all that's happening. There's a sign-up sheet for that out on the bulletin board. All right, thank you. Also then on December the 11th will be the uh, leadership board meeting at its prospective time of 
And then this Sunday, December the 24th. Anybody know what that is? Yeah. <laughs> Christmas Eve service. Uh, we'll be starting here at 7 o'clock. And uh, we already have some uh, special singings from the, the children that are going to sing this year. And uh, maybe if you'd like to bring forth something that will be a part of that service, uh, I encourage you to do so. Gift cards are always available from Wises. See Dawn, and, excuse me, yeah, see Mary Sue, Mary Funk, and uh, Vaughn. Any other announcements? Yeah, for those that would like to help box up for families, a few families that we have, and for, we're going to do to the veterans giveaway, um, food distribution. Um, they do that on <coughs> Friday, but we will box it up and take it down to Winfield Baptist Church. Um, Sometime this week, probably Monday or Tuesday. I'd like to work on this Monday and Tuesday because the rest of the week is so busy um, with, with things. And plus, the veterans give away their stuff, their food boxes on Friday. And um, so, yeah, if you have any other nice size boxes to put um, groceries into and you're going by on Monday, um, please drop them off. Thanks. Uh, also, Got something, but I can't remember what it is. <laughs> oh, the shoe boxes. The shoe boxes. I'm going to take to Milton Baptist uh, for distribution. Um, I know I turned my back. Shoe boxes will go to Milton Baptist on Tuesday. Also, again, I wish to thank you uh, for last week's gift, uh, appreciate, Pastor Appreciation Week at month, and uh, I got a lot of looks when I wore it over into the to the. Uh, T-shirt of work to the to the restaurant. So <laughs> the guy I know just stepped in and said, "What's your shirt say?" Look at that. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. All right. Any others announcements? Now, before we get into the uh, the prayer, I'd like to take this time to give thanks to all of our veterans. And as you, in your insert, there's uh, several quotes that hold dearly into the lives of the individuals who have served. And it came from Stephen Ambrose, who is a youth uh, band of brothers. It's a book that he wrote. And he's a historian. And he wrote this, and I usually say this, quote this at services for a soldier. The American citizen soldier knew the difference between right and wrong. And they didn't want to live in a world which wrong prevailed. So they fought and won. And all of us, living and yet to be born, must be forever profoundly grateful. That just echoes is where we're at today. As we remember our soldiers, the list that's in your bulletin, and if I've counted them right, there's over 30 individuals that have served, some dating back as far as the First World War. Because that's as far as the records go. There may have been others that had served during that conflict of the 1860s and the 18, because this church was built in 1870. There may have been someone there during that time of great despair in this nation. I have a quote here. It's a letter. It comes from the Executive Mansion in Washington, D.C. It says, Dear Madam, I have been shown the files of the War Department's statement of the Adjutant General of Massachusetts that you are the mother of five sons who have died gloriously on the field of battle. I feel, I feel how weak and fruitless must be any words of mine which
should attempt to beguile you from the grief of the loss so overwhelming. But I cannot refrain from tendering you with the constellation that may be found in the thanks of the Republic they died to save. I pray that the Heavenly Father may have served you with anguish of your bereavement and leave you only the cherished memories of the loved and the lost and the solemn pride that must be yours to have laid so costly a sacrifice upon the altar of freedom. Yours very sincerely and respectfully, Abraham Lincoln, November the 21st, 1864. Would our veterans please stand? Thank you. Thank you. Right, at this right, I see one, two, three from the Army Guy, Dawn, and Jim. And that's little Jim now. Big Jim behind the U.S. Air Force. All right. I thank you very much. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence this morning. We thank you for the times that we can celebrate your presence in our lives. Lord, we know that you are the encourager. You are the, the force that drives us to serve you. And Lord, the force that drives our nation's heroes, we thank you for those. And Lord, we know that you are the giver of freedom. You are the author of all that is free. It's the Son that sets you free. You are free indeed. Those are precious words from your holy word, the truth that leads and guides us in all of our ways. Lord, be with us now as we continue to worship and to give you praise and glory and honor for all the things you have bestowed upon this humble congregation throughout so many years. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand as we sing the doxology? <laughs> Which is the word of God. Praying always on all prayer and supplication to the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all prayer. 
perseverance and his supplication for all saints. Thank you. You may be seated. The battle belongs to the Lord. Number 732 in the blue.
some 80 years later, we, had, we were in an armed conflict throughout the world. And on June of 1945, a combination of Allied troops stormed the beaches of Normandy to crush the most recent axis of evil. Individuals will say, well, gee, you know, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. The world is not evil. Because when God created the world, he said in Genesis, it is good. But it's the evil heart and the wickedness of men. The satanic influence on the hearts of individuals reject Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. On the cliffs that overlook Normandy, there is a statue a, to those individuals who were lost at sea or just totally unaccounted for. And embedded in the base, the bronze base, it says, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Praise God. The battle belongs to the Lord. Let us sing the battle hymn of the Republic.
never call retreat. Our God is marching on. Praise God. Would our scripture reader come this morning? Reading from 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 4. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. Endure hardships with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civ civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. And that is our Lord. May the Lord add our blessing. Amen. Thank you, Joy. When you get home, tell Frank we say thank you. Okay. You know, or if he's listening, Frank, thank you. All right. How many of you are enlisted in the Lord's army? Yes. yes. All right. Every hand should be raised. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> well, in case you haven't <coughs> been enlisted, today's the day. Now, I'm not going to ask you to stand up and raise your hand and, and pledge to protect and to serve. I'm not going to do that. But have you ever read Matthew 28, 18 to 20? It's in your Bible. And these are the words of the Supreme Commander of the Army of the Lord. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given me to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things. That I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That is your first commandment from the Lord Jesus Christ. If you read that passage of scripture, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you have now been enlisted and you have your marching orders. In this army, there is no age restrictions. There is no physical restrictions. If you have enlisted in this army, it may take you places that you never want to go. Individuals who enlist in the military, they could be sent to a foreign nation where people don't like them. Where they really don't want to go because of the veracity of, the, of the, what's happening. You've enlisted in the Lord's army. You might get sent to Africa. There's a song that says, Please don't send me to Africa. You know, I'm afraid of snakes and lions. You know, it's a cute little song. Being a servant and a soldier of the Lord doesn't mean you may have to go to a foreign country. Some of you may be called to be missionaries to a foreign country. You may be also called to go to a foreign land within your own neighborhood where they, where they speak a foreign language. Something that you don't understand. I'm not talking about uh, you know, someone who speaks like Spanish or French or something. They speak a different language than what you and I speak. When we say Jesus Christ, we know who we're giving praise to. But they take it in the negative, it's derogatory, it's, it's, it's harmful. They take it totally as a, as a damnation of the Lord's name. You may be called to that foreign field. That's part of your enlistment. And also what's a part of your enlistment is we have to be able to recognize who the our opposition is. 
we've already enlisted, age requirements, height and weight requirements, and no such thing. So now we need to recognize who our enemy is, who the opposition is. Individuals who we come in contact with, we may know them, they may, we may be friends with them, but they're still in opposition to the word of God. Ephesians tells us what our opposition is like. Paul, to the church at Ephesus, writes there in chapter 6, verses 10 and 12. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That's what Paul told Timothy right there in chapter verse 1. Be strong. Be strong, Timothy. Stand fast in the grace of Jesus that is Jesus Christ. We walk each and every day by grace. It's grace that sustains us. It's grace that carries us. We cannot just grit our teeth and go through life and hope to and think that we can do whatever we want to please the Lord by works or by legalism. We live by grace. We're saved by grace. <clears throat> and we walk and we grow strong by the grace of God. The same message to Timothy is the same message to the church in Ephesus. It's the same to the church here in Montana. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. As we talked about last week, we don't have to worry about confronting the devil. He already knows that he's a defeated foe. But he's going to press hard against us. All we need to do is, in Jesus' name, that's power. That's power. That's a, that's a name that Satan and all his minions don't like. But that's the power that God has given us as we talked about it last week. God has given us that privilege and that honor to be able to proclaim to those forces of opposition in the name of Jesus. Evilness, lawfulness. We'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We're, we're, our job is not to condemn the human beings. But we're to face the evil that is invested in them. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. There's an evil force out there. There's a spirit world out there. We can see it made evidence by just turning on the news. Mm. Or reading the paper, provided it's a paper that tells you the truth and not is slanted to one way. We wrestle not against those things, against the human being. But if we wrestle against those things that are evil, we need to be able to recognize the demonic influence and be able to recognize it for what it is as we walk and grow strong in the Lord by His grace. We continue on to do wage war against the enemy. The enemy in and of itself is Satan in all of his cohorts. I got news for you. If you've been walking with the Lord and walking in grace, and on occasion, uh, on occasion, if you're not 
feeling the heat from Satan's darts. You're too far from the front. Now, granted, everybody's job is important. You know, not everybody can be in the rear with the gear. There needs to be some soldiers out on the front lines. You know, uh, one guy put his, uh, this time around, he said, I'm going to be rear echelon mess kit. I'm going to be in the back. Because I've done my time out front. Everybody's job in the army of the Lord is important. Whether it be writing cards or letters, whether it be gathering things up for the shoebox ministry, whether it's bringing food for, for those who are in need. Everybody's job is important. You're just one call in that big, grand, and glorious year for all Jesus Christ. So we need to be aware of that. And if you're feeling the nudge to become more active in that, proactive, I encourage you to do so. Under the inspiration and the guidance of the Holy Spirit in your life. These are the things that we do. Then Paul goes on to say in, in verse 2. Paul was looking and he said, you have heard me say amongst many witnesses. Paul was looking to the future. And this is a fourfold proclamation to Timothy. It's from Paul to Timothy. From Timothy to faithful men. Who then will in turn teach others. Paul is looking to make sure that the gospel, the true gospel, goes forward. The truth is fair, shared. God's truth, God's word goes marching along. But believe me, brothers and sisters, we have some folks out there that are proclaiming a false, false gospel. There are false teachers, there are false preachers, there are false churches. Even Jesus said there in Matthew 24, do not be deceived. Know what's in God's word. Know what thus saith the Lord in its proper context and not taken out of context. You can take this and make it say whatever you want to. But when you take it in its proper authority, it becomes quite clear what the truth is. Which brings to mind, we have individuals out there that are wishing, wishing to erase and change the culture of Jesus Christ and his word. They want to make it say something that it doesn't say. I guess they, they call that cancel culture. And we have that within our own nation trying to erase or redefine our history or just get rid of it altogether. Why is it that Veterans Day is one day out of the year? And are there other groups and organizations that sometimes get a whole month or sometimes two months? Some are promoting for a whole year. Why is that? Our culture is changing. It's going in a direction that none of us wish to see. I have a quote here from an individual if I can find it, but I guess I'll just have to try it by memory. You know, we complain about our government. But our government, our leaders, are a reflection of the individuals who sent them there, of the cultures that sent them there. And it's kind of God's reward for turning your backs, their backs, on God. Think about that. I wish I had the whole context to do read it all to you. It's very powerful. Yeah. Our government is a reflection
generation of the people who sent them there. And it's quite evident that it, there's individuals that say the United States is going in a, in, a, in a wrong direction. We're looking for revival now. We need more armies, soldiers in the streets. We need more armies of the Lord in our homes. As parents and grandparents and great-grandparents, we need to be proclaiming what God's word is and the truth there is. You see, Paul was looking to the future. And the future that we should be looking forward to is the spreading of the word of God, the true word of God. And Paul goes on to say to Timothy, therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I've heard stories from individuals, first person accounts of the atrocities of from individuals that I have known over the years. Powerful statements. But they did their job. They had to do what was right. They had to do what they were told to do. Sometimes here, when Paul is saying, you know, endure the hardness, sometimes we think it, it's not pleasant when, when somebody sneezes and we just you say, God bless you. You can't say that. That's in citing a religious accusation. You can't do that. We think that's persecution. But ladies and gentlemen, there's places throughout this world where if you hold a copy of God's word in your house or in your hand, it's going to cost you your life. God has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call my treat. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Things are going to unfold, and we need to be ready. We need to be proactive. Be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Paul then offers Timothy some encouragement read that over in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses, verse 12. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of the own eternal life to which you have been called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Are we ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Or do we think it's situation ethics where we won't proclaim Jesus as Lord when we are in the company of certain people because whatever reason you wish not to share or be a representative of the Lord. We need to be obedient unto the Lord. We need to be obey the commands of our supreme commander. 2 Corinthians puts it this way. <clears throat> Casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your disobedience is fulfilled. When your obedience is fulfilled. We are to be encouraged by that. We are to think that you know, we are to bring ourselves into obedience first. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. To make a difference in our homes and in our communities, in our nations, it begins with us. Being the change agent of Jesus Christ. No man who entangles himself in the affairs of this, no man who wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life. In other words, Jesus encountered that in Luke 
chapter 9, when he said, follow me. And the one individual said, I, I, I want to go back first and, and, and bury my father. You know, i got to do that. You know, Jesus said, let the dead bury their dead. And another one said, I want to go back. I want to go back and say, you know, farewell to you know, my family before I go off and follow you. He says, no man who puts his hand in the plow and looks back. It would be the same for, for those who have served. If all of a sudden you're in the midst of a battle and you say to your commanding officer, I got a dentist appointment, I got to go. <laughs> you know, or, or my wife called and the dog's loose. It's not going to happen. We're called to stand and fight and be firm. Because when we do that, we're remembering our duty and our honor to the Lord. That should be our motivation. To see one more soul in heaven. And it begins with you and I. The last part of this verse is that, that he, the individual, the good soldier, please him who has chosen him. To be a soldier. I'm looking at a room full of soldiers. If you've been called by God, that means you've been chosen by God. And we need to fulfill our duty and our pledge to our Savior. And I thank God for the individuals who have given us the privilege and the liberty because of their duty and honor to this nation. That we can stand in here this morning in peace and in safety. Thank you, veterans of every, every age. And when we set it down, we shift it all out. When we we realize that the battle's already been paid for, <laughs> it's already been won. Christ defeated all the evil, wickedness, and whatever name you want to put to it at Calvary's cross. It's finished. It's done with. And I pray for those individuals who are, who are haunted by the atrocities <coughs> of war and the things that they've seen and done. They know that the battle's already been won. I hope each of us this morning can look at the things that are unfolding in our world in a different light, knowing that Jesus paid it all. Let's sing our closing hymn. <coughs> it is finished. And take these words to heart, as you say. Number 191. In the <coughs>
Lord, we thank you ever so much that the battles that rage within our souls have been taken care of on the cross of Calvary. Lord, let us each and every one realize that you paid it all. And everything that comes our way, all those darts from the evil one, have been paid for by you. Lord, you have forgiven us. And now we have enlisted into your army of the righteous chosen ones. Lord, be with us as we go from this mission house to the fields that are beyond these four walls. Lord, may we share the good news with someone who's struggling a battle of eternity. And Lord, may we leave them to you. Be with each and every soul that's here this morning. Your name I pray. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.